Yes, sir. Here. Right. Before we uh, start, I didn't like the conclusions that we came to with respect to number 36. It isn't a reductio, because a reductio would end up in something positive, which would be an absurd. So I really worked at it, and the discussion was, as I listened, it's like people added to the meaning rather than just staying with what he was saying. And so I struggled over it to say, okay, just taking where he's at. Pardon me. Start this. Start the one. Number 36. <clears throat> yeah, you call that? Well, I don't call it a reductio. No, no, please. I mean, give me the first one. Oh, uh, accordingly then. Okay. It is reasonable. As it is reasonable. Okay, that's good. Now we're all together. Okay. <clears throat> Which uh, is the honest Uh, 162A. And we can just move on, but I think we were much further along, about the end of it. But what I did was, I just tried to, I struggled with it and said, you know, how can I just take what he is saying just without any additional understanding and see if there's something in what he said? And the way I reasoned it, or the way I read it, was the one without no being exists. Given that, that's a, just a statement. And then he says, for if it were not the case that there will be no non-being, then <clears throat> if you hold on to the idea that... Okay, would you read it again? Because I think it may be the way you're reading it. Go ahead. An emphasis. Go ahead. The one... For if... For if it were not the case that there will, will be non-being, For if that were not the case, that there, that there will be non-being. Right. See, you have to take a look at the Greek, Trina, to clear up a couple of those words. Okay. How does it look here? The same. Okay, because that and those other words aren't there. Let me make it simpler. That's all I was suggesting. For if it were not, there will be non-being. <coughs> yes, that's true. Go ahead. Then that which is would let go, would let something go to non-being. So what I was seeing that just from the very beginning, which is the without no being exists, for if it were not, there, there would be non-being. There would be non-being. So he then takes and says, because there isn't, because there is, which came from the first, then that which is would let go to non-being yeah. because you couldn't have be in non-being mm. so and then 
yet non-being would immediately be. That's how it comes to be. So it doesn't need a reductio and it doesn't need any additional statements. It's there. I don't think that's a reductio. If I said it or anybody said it, it wouldn't be true. Okay. Well, it was if, said. But apart, so from, apart from that, then you do understand it. Yeah, I understand it. Okay. I was presenting okay. the issue that okay. it's it doesn't need any additional sentences mm. to make it clear. Mm. So is that fresh coffee in Pierre's cup? Yes. Boy, I completely don't understand why that new pot was burned. Okay. That's okay. Because he's, he put it in earlier. Ah, gotcha. No problem. No. Mm. But what kind of reasoning is it, would you call it, if it's not reductive? Well, that's what I, I, that's a good question, because I was puzzling about that and trying to figure out what would that be. Well, it starts with, if that were not the case, Well, that usually is the way in which a, a reductio starts. Start. Right. But that's not what he's doing. It's almost like, it. well, it's, it's like he's taking the, um, he's saying that if there was no being in non-being, then the first statement, the one uh, without being exists. So he would have to contradict that, but he doesn't. Well, he's great. He's raising why it is that there is being and non-being. kind of reasoning is that. But that, I, I just wanted to say that I, I really struggled with that because it just didn't make any sense why he would be that way. So I think we were way at the end, near the end. So. Okay, but you don't have any difficulty with the passage anymore. You work your way through it. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Does it need to be repeated? Okay, shall we push on then? We went into the <coughs> <coughs> fun with the bond, and now we're going to push the implications of it on. Our good friend Lucia, are we not? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't bring that. Sure. And non Lucia. Mm hmm. Not Lucia. So. So the, the oh, conclusion, furthermore, on the one hand, the non-being participates of non lucia in order that it may be non-being. Whereas on the other hand, non-being participates of lucia in order that it may be non-being if in turn it will be perfectly not be the non-being. Can you do the same argument with non-usia that yep. you can do with <clears throat> the non-being? That's where we're going. Of the existence of not being, because if there's any way in which it will be non-being, it will give up something of being mm -hmm. to non-being. Mm -hmm. And so we see it's the same way, it's kind of a double negative makes it a positive kind of thing. Right. Hmm. Same logic. No, the, no, the I'm, genus, I'm just playing the it genus, out. The gene just went through. Mm -hmm. No, no, I'm just kind of like lining up the parallels. Okay. 
because otherwise I would be in serious doubt about how that participates in non-being. I mean, non see it, but I could see how the fact that you even have to state it in some way admits to its existence. So both participation does not participate in our see it. Yes. Okay. okay. Where are we? 38. Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm on the wrong page. Okay. Oh, I'm in the wrong hypothesis. There's those two things. Okay. It led to my downfall. Curious, a bunch of words that are being added there. <clears throat> Always a tough to do. What to add to make it clear? But you can justify. It yeah, yourself. well, that could be it. Okay. On the other hand, you put particip did participate so to say. Hmm. I see where you're coming from, Dave. Yep. Looks like it's exactly a different kind of parallel structure. Mm -hmm. Which makes me wonder if that's a function of Greek thought. You know? There it is. And there, because the language, the thought, or because the thought, the language. Kind of a geometrical thinking. Parallel lines and, yeah. yeah. Or anal analogical, right? That's, I in a like way, that. what it suggests, doesn't mm -hmm. it? What your comment. Yeah, many of the Mendei phrases are parallel. Mm -hmm. Or perpendicular, or that's the other yeah. function they can be, which is kind of cool. <coughs> are we still on camera? Or are we on camera? Good. Uh, well, in that case, I'll turn out to be such a clown. <laughs> not, quite, not quite such a drama queen. A what? A Dram drama queen? Yeah, no, that's funny. Cool. That's funny. I, that's what I call myself sometimes. But the dramas are not tragedies. No. Well, we got that. 30, 38 mm. seems obvious. Fascinating. 39, yeah. 40, yeah. Papalogos. Mm. Papalogos. Okay. In, in all its glory. Yeah. With its and own one, sia? One paragraph. Which one? The one we're in. Okay. Good, because I was looking down there by 41. Right? Okay, we yeah, got it, it goes all the way down and to 41. 41 ha looks like um, the, mo the modern people today, a lot of them are just trying to change their habits as if that will change their psyches. Right. Yeah, well, let's keep going to 41. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Most okay. truly. It is, is it not the case then, seeing that both non-being is present with real being, and that which is, is present with non-real being, is it not also the case that the one, since indeed it is not, must necessarily have a share of existence in order that it may not be? It is necessary. Yeah. Um. Like it? You want to move on? Yeah, I just uh, <clears throat> the idea of present is is a key term that he's playing with in hypothesis six. 
And here he might actually have a basis for it. No. He has the metestine instead of Nesti, which is what he uses. And metainai down below. And metainai down below, oh, cool. Which he translates there as have a share. Which I think is justifiable as a translation. Mm -hmm. The second, the first is probably true too with metta. So what does presence suggest as opposed to other possible hmm. relationships? Um, and, 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 and immediacy to being or to be. Mm -hmm. Also maybe another parallel to um, parousia, right? Parousia is that which results from the Mm -hmm. from from Usia, the mm -hmm. kind of gift of Usia, the perfume that results from the flower. So here you have something. Now I don't know if it's that I mean presence is that I'm just saying that's sometimes what we do with presence for Usia is par Usia. Hmm. To be among to have a share in, or claim to. I don't actually see it. See, it's again, we're the playing, he's also yeah. playing with Anon, right? Good old Estine and then Anon in the uh -huh. pictures. And, Through that whole paragraph. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, right, the contrast. That's very interesting, isn't it? Because we're always looking at that to try to clarify just exactly what comes with the A9 package as opposed to the uh, auntie. Hmm. And so now we have Mete Nai. Mete Nai to A9. And metesti and metenai, they go with the dative according to the lexicon. Looks that way. Just to share. Okay, so you could have. Oh, see, that's very interesting, isn't it? Because you have the genitive of the articular infinitive and the negative, and then you have the dative as the object of metesti. <coughs> At least that's what it looks like in one. Hmm. You see that, Pierre? It's very, it, you have the two a in this case, two me a i metestin to auntie. Yes. And we were, I was just saying that to auntie naturally goes with metesti, but the subject, sh there should be a subject f form somewhere. And it might just be impersonal. They do have an impersonal firm for that. Sorry. See, it, it's so Thank charming you. to be able to... To have uh, a share. Uh, like, do you think that statement is true for... Uh, say, a young... Uh, you ever get into that stuff called... Uh, um, pathology? No. Path pathologos? Oh, does that fit? I would say, yeah, I mean, yes. It's remarkable. I mean, it's freaking remarkable. Are you saying that, that paragraph 38 is kind of a metaphysics of the path of logos? Oh, yeah, 38, 39. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's really beautiful. You... You know what's interesting here is it looks like that metesti can be an impersonal verb. So it would mean it, and, and the person for whom the share, that person is in the dative. So you would say something like, there is a share, um, 
there is a share of there is a share of non-being to being or being has a share right because because the person the mm. person who has the share is in the data that of which they have a share according to these examples so I don't know if that works mm. but that's that's what's suggested by the Greek is that being right has a share of non-being or there is for being a share of non-being to being okay I don't know if that makes a difference but that I was just trying to work out why he had those and that which is is present with see that's the second the second the positive is clearer I mean as far as the Greek is concerned if, if you just being. said there is present a non-being and with respect to non-being there is present a being is that what you just said no because present is not one of the supported translations of the word I use the is share yep Metesky does not have that is a share of for not for being there is a share of not being and for not being there is a share of being yes and for the one since it is not uh, it is necessary to be to share of non-being to share of the not be uh-huh. ace to me oh. so actually it, is it not also the case is the way he's taking that negative yeah now the question there is so you're saying that the SD is share yeah. Has it, it has a share in, yes. Why isn't it with being? Why isn't it with being? No, I said, isn't meta with a word that means with? Mm. With it, many other meanings. After. In compounds. In compounds, it has a different, slightly different meaning. In compounds, it'll. it'll it means share? It, it could. Well, you have metekai, right? And metalombano, both of those mean share. Right, because of meta. Right, I was just trying to see what the distinction is because you have meta SD here, not metal and bono. So I, I hadn't noticed that, but it's an interesting word that he's using meta SD here rather than what he uses for present in other situations. Well, if the Greeks weren't completely formed, yeah. then the of makes a difference. To be present of non being. Are to have a share of non-being. And unless they're completely wacko, I would be to have a share of not being than to be present of not being. Mm-hmm. So you can use your English. There is there is a certain necessity. I mean, English does play a role in translating Greek. It's, it's not completely. So what happened to you, Pierre? You were off on a revelry there, and I was hoping. I it think was a reverie, although a reverie. it might have been a revelry reverie. Uh, I, I was hoping well, it was about um, the nature of midnight <coughs> free, but it could have been. I mean, Apologos. Are you familiar with Apologos uh, things? Boy, much more than I'd like to be. <laughs> and I and I and I'm way ahead of Barbara. <laughs> Sorry, we're not sure what you mean by familiar, but yeah. yes, yeah. all my life. Yeah. yeah, How do you account for suffering? Mm. I wish I'd known yesterday when I laid down on the couch in a fetal position. Um, mm. How do you account for suffering? It's totally unnecessary. The struggle of the self to write itself in its wouldn't be any struggle. The acceptance of the self that it's not right. Well, I was thinking, yeah. What? You see, I, yeah. The, the acceptance of the self that it's not right. Oh, yeah, that's true. I was also thinking uh, just what, you what, struggle what? against it, you're angry with it. Yeah, okay, what does that mean? Okay, metaphysically, we're here. That, that in my existence there's something that's not is not fair there just that, that even though I exist it lacks the necessary elements of existence 
but therefore there must be something in you that knows there's something missing. And that missing must be of such a kind that produces suffering. Right? That's not good enough. Mm. Does that mean... That's true, not producing. <clears throat> like, you know, it's very simple, very simple, you know. Like, why isn't it the kind of thing you learn, you learn, whatever the hell it is you learn, and you go on. Yeah, it's not like that, I though. mean, yes it is. I mean, that's all it is. It's learning, that's all. Well, you know the Republic says about the mm. most important things, the worst, the thing that every person hates is to have a false image of what is real. But you can put him aside, he's great. <laughs> <coughs> no, see, what does that mean in terms of this issue? <coughs> wouldn't, you, <coughs> wouldn't you agree? Learning is learning. Uh, you learn to ride a bike, you know, so what? Uh, learn a language, so what? You know, it's all the mm. same. Ah, there's a certain kind of learning that carries with it suffering. Mm. Why the hell should there be suffering? Why not just, hey, just learning? Yeah, just what the hell another thing to learn. That's it. Right? Yeah, that would be ideal. Yeah. Well, See, what he's saying here, is it not the case then, seeing that both non-being, pathologos, mm -hmm. is present with real being? Hmm. And that which is, is present with the pathologos. Is it not the case that the one, since it, indeed it is not, right, must necessarily um, <clears throat> share or uh, be present with, depending upon which way you want to go, existence. There's a sharing in order, in order for it that it may not be. I mean, in other words, uh, how do you account for the existence of pathologos? How come it is? How come it's something that is not, and it is? Well, I like calling it a parasite, which you do no. in your book, because no. then it's, it's like leeches off your being and thereby gains its quasi-existence or quasi-reality. No. no. I think that is would account for it. And I also think that there might be, please, the object, you're welcome, um, the problem of the disharmony between the watcher, the self, and uh, that which it's equated to. The, it's like manacles or bonds or fetters, and therefore there's a natural objection. Still not an answer. I'm just yeah, puzzling yeah, it out, yeah, thinking aloud. Yeah, yeah. See, does, it, does the pathologus presuppose that everyone who has it must at that very time and continues to have the presence of real being? Yes. And because of the difference between the two, the effect that has is called suffering. Yes. I would go with that. I would add, though, that it's the, the conclusion that you can't do anything to change it. Or that's just the way you are. Oh, well, that's ruinous. Mm. You no, know, like... That's, the only that's my sister's suffering. point of view. <laughs> that's oh. my experience when I'm in it, you know, mm. like, when yeah, I'm going I'm, through it. I'm, I different recognize, from, like, I'm different from everyone else, therefore I have a right to suffer. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> So this this well, what's about my I'm because uh, I'm cut off from real being I'm cut off from the state of that and the power that comes from it and the freedom and the ability and I'm left with this as my reality. <laughs> okay, going to the board, maybe.
Oh, this is good. What did you put into it? This is the lo- uh, vodka. Vodka? Yeah. Is that true? That looks like fresh squeezed orange. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just right here. Yeah. 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 But, um, it's like an empty cup. Could I have some of that? But you see, uh, just a, a bit. Is, is this is the sixth the metaphysical basis of the Pantelos? With one minor exception. It looks like it's the metaphysical statement of the presence of a pathologos, mm. yes. but not with living one life through a pathologos, as so many people do without mm. really ever suffering the consequences of a pathologos. They're always suffering. We, we would say they're suffering. They always <coughs> suffer. Okay. They always suffer. So they're always suffering. Yeah. Um, let's take. Take, take the case of people who do not experience suffering in yeah. their path That's what I was thinking of. Right? Like Joshua. Just in me. order to do that, hmm. agree? There's something curious that goes on. Sadism? <laughs> well. Well, you said sometimes you share out your There's your a path disassociation in themselves. Mm. Oh, true. Which goes by a variety of psychological okay. names. And therefore, the price they pay is that there is no feeling, either positive or negative. They suspend feeling. Did you say there is a there is a situation where somebody mm-hmm. does live out their pathologies, but there is no suffering? Is that what you said? Sure, Donald Trump. <clears throat> yeah, boy. How is that possible? Well, there's a whole class of people who don't experience any suffering, and uh, they're called... uh, Sociopaths or psychopaths? Psychopaths. Or sociopaths. They change the name to psychopaths. I mean, uh, sociopaths. I I like the other name. Yeah, psychopath psychopath is... Yeah, Mm. Yeah, that's because of sick psyche, huh? Yeah. So how, like... What what kind of like turning point <clears throat> is there, or where where do they stop suffering, like uh, as opposed to other people who suffer from their pathology? Like, um, central to the teaching has to be uh, that whatever is going on doesn't matter. that nothing matters, that there really isn't any connection between feelings and reality. Wow. Prostitutes are like that sometimes, or or they're pimps. What? I said prostitutes and pimps are pimps, an example of that. There's no, they, that's their job. That's who they are. Yeah. They desensitize duty. themselves. Yeah, duty. They desensitize themselves. Yeah. Money desen- desensitizes people. But aren't they still suffering on a fundamental level? Because... Uh, yeah, well, the, the answer is yes. Uh, uh, usually, it takes the form of uh, uh, <clears throat> when they face death. Oh, can they maintain that even in the face of death? That, that point of view, though. And some people to, to can die and then go through that, and, and they still don't have any feelings about anything. That's all there is. They can march to their death. Wow. There's a, okay. And th- does that include people who march those people to death? Yes. Like the ch- the violent chons or the violent presidents or whatever they are. Yeah. Well, not much difference, of course. 
Wow, that's beautiful too, uh, Gina. See, the, the Jews as a group of people went through a, a profound group change of, of psyche captured by Fiddler on the Roof. Mm. Right? That's why it was so important in Jewish communities to see that film. Hey God, choose someone else. Oh. <laughs> We've had it, man. Hey, pick on someone else. There. Hey, you're great and all that. I agree with you. Yes, indeed. But pick on someone else. We've had it. Whole, a whole, a whole people change. What, what kind of change? It cost them six million lives. The question mm -hmm. is, was that a psychic? change of monumental significance that hmm. that in, in the long range justified the loss of six million people? Like have they like if there's any psychological philosophical growth, did they change? Yes. I have my own opinion about Palestine right now, so no. I'm yeah. Did they just make the Palestine the chosen people? I mean, and I mean, no. Be, yeah, because um, the dynamic of being able to feeling free to abuse them. Yeah. Right. Completely changed. Hmm. My bumper sticker saying "Free Palestine" never goes over well. Hmm. I didn't change enough to. Hmm? I said they didn't change enough to recognize they switched roles. But there was a town recently in Mexico, I read, that stood up against the cartels. They were just tired. There's 4,000 of them. They just got some little guns and batons and uh, started challenging the cartels. What they did was they would take hostages of the cartel members and threaten and threaten to kill them if they just didn't stop playing games there and leave the town. And the police started coming in and helping the, the townspeople. And the statement made by one of them was, uh, "Doesn't matter. We know we're going to die. They're going to kill us. They'll probably kill our." generations, but we're standing up now. And that was pretty much his statement. The question is whether those people have made it a jump in, in their own evolution. I think so. And, and what is the cost? Like we're going, to, we're going through something similar. Yeah, we're going to, we're going right. to be very costly. Yeah. Like it is not true that any group of people can join either the Republican or the Democratic Party. That there is a whole group of people that cannot identify with either. That's right. Uh-oh, what follows from that? Mm -hmm. They're going to look for something maybe that they find more. But there are two groups of them, see? <coughs> the Bernies and, and, and the Trumpers. <coughs> So that there's a division in those two that don't fit in the polarity of Democrats. So are there four? Yeah, there's no four. Trump rejectors, Bernie supporters, no. Republican Democrat. Hmm. Um, and, and there are different styles of thinking for each one of them. So that, that, that pretty much deals with my question, how, what is the continuance of a pathologos? Yeah. But here is what, at what point pathologos causes suffering yeah. in this paragraph. Yeah. But the other one is anecdotal. And that is, you have to assume that in the deepest pathologos there's still awareness of reality. Right. Mm -hmm. Or the self. Mm -hmm. There is awareness of the self. That's interesting. Has to be. The toenail of the left foot. Or, or you wouldn't feel the loss. Mm-hmm. 
you wouldn't feel the well how come there's a sense of injustice it's just another thing you've learned because mm -hmm. the central being will also appear to be with the one that's easy yeah. that's interesting you say injustice because Bill Maher uh, has gone through a tremendous amount of pain and suffering under Trump because he keeps suing Bill Meyer and I think it's Meyer. Mayor. Mayor. And recently an interview with him said that uh, he said now he has power. But he made an interesting statement. He says the guy doesn't he, he as soon as he feels that he's being treated unjustly he retaliates. So he does have a sense of what he thinks is unjust, and that is, don't belittle him or don't treat, don't treat him as if he's doing something unkind to you. And that's his sense of unjustice, injustice. So there is a a sense of self in him. I wouldn't call it self yet, but. Yeah, well, he lost his job on the networks because he said 9-11 uh, was a fraud. Oh, Bill Nair? By, yeah. Perpetrated by the government. Yep. Next day he was out. But he still talks. Like, you know that old expression, a burr under your saddle? Mm-hmm. I guess I was wondering whether there's a natural irritation to having a fault, which is in a way what you're suggesting, we're calling it suffering. I'm not, I'm building, I think, on the same model. And I guess it was because a sense of the self, if the self is that which sees and thinks and hears, right, the, I'm in a way equating it to the watcher then it may be the case that these false ideas about the self are like that. They're like um, an irritant, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, <clears throat> by their presence. Yeah. Just thinking about it. Yeah, when I was doing that... Uh work philosophical midwifery I was wondering whether it, it should have a chapter on the metaphysics of the pathologos but mm. I tossed it out mm. I think so I still have it somewhere mm. but it's it, it's it, it, it's out of here I mean I didn't make it up I almost think you could look at the ten signs of a problem mm -hmm. and there are probably ten sufferings of the soul <laughs> don't you think I mean, if you take a secondary goal as your primary, or if you, um, it's like wearing too small of shoes or something. Um, if you take a secondary goal as if it's your oh, highest goal, that, I was just saying that's a little bit like wearing shoes that are yes, too small. Yes, I got it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I was wondering if each of those, one could look at each of those signs of a problem and see it as a mode of suffering. So instead of just four noble truths about suffering. We have ten. And the metaphysics in the sixth. I don't know. So, <clears throat> is it like that person like Trump has uh, identified so much with their pathologos that they've completely cut themselves off from the awareness of their self? I think the, the, the observation that he is very sensitive to criticism. Sensitive? Mm-hmm. Hyper, hyper. Hyper, yeah. Sensitive, yeah, I agree. Suggests that in spite of it, the fact that he's a psychopath, um, he's a, he has a very fragile soul. Yeah. When he wakes up at 3 o'clock in the morning to make a nasty tweet about a woman who offended him? Yeah, that's nuts. That's that shows his sensitivity. His, yeah. his, his, but what does that show? That shows that there is a sense of being in the yeah. non-being. Yeah. And then it comes to him, unfortunately, at three o'clock in the morning when he can't do a damn thing about it. Yeah. That's right. Or he doesn't know what to do about it except to retaliate. Mm -hmm. That's his mode. 
are you are you pointing towards like his lack of fortitude or in himself? No. It, I, I don't I don't know the word fortitude. Like um I don't use it, so how do you understand that? Uh like his lack of um un unreactiveness. Is that what you're pointing to? Like he's uh, the smallest thing um, kind of sets him off or uh, insults him. But not the smallest thing. I mean, when someone criticizes him, that's real. It's not the smallest mm. thing. Uh, so therefore, I'd, I'd put it in a different class than the smallest thing. Well, hmm. Like uh, someone is characterizing him negatively, and he can't stand it. Means what? He doesn't like to be wrong. What? I said he doesn't like to be wrong. He he can't. He doesn't know what to do with it. Yeah, but see, the word. Yeah, on one level, he doesn't know. You know about wrong, but he ha doesn't have a good. He doesn't have a right and wrong on a higher level. Though, you no. see. Oh, yeah, on a higher level, no. Yeah, so that, uh, The right becomes a justification for his wrong. Uh, the day after he was elected, one of his uh, super luminaries said, in response to some real positive criticism by some very important people, she said, we're keeping a list. In other words, we're not <coughs> going to deal with what's being set against us, we're going to go after the people who are saying it against us. Sure. That's Putin. That's censorship. That's a tyrant. His, his uh, director of information, as it were, lasted 24 hours mm -hmm. and he quit. And someone had a, the good sense to check this gentleman's Twitter account and found in it a statement of what he thought of Trump. Oh my gosh. Whoops. <laughs> and, and it was, I can't believe that this guy uh, spends so much, nearly so much time at night on Twitter. Not statesmanship. Not word mm -hmm. Christ is, mm -hmm. but on who says what about him. He sifts through. Well, he lashes out because the moment somebody criticizes him, he sees his emptiness of self beyond it. So he's got to maintain the, mm. the non-being as much as possible and make sure that that's managed. That's the world of Twitter. That's the world mm. of online. That's your, mm. that's your fake self. That's what he has to manage. Like, if you could just, at the same time, he wants everybody to pay attention to that, too. Because if they look past it, they're going to be like, oh, you're empty. Like, How do you see Twitter? I, I, I don't know that, so. Twitter? Yeah, how do you, oh, well, you just I see, characterize it in a very interesting way. I see it in many ways, but number one, it's like your projected self. It's your image of yourself. How does how do they do that? What? It, it, what is the, it, through what instrument do they create that? Their words. Twitter, Twitter is like Facebook in the, in a sense. Oh, you want to know that, know. right? You want to know what it is? Oh, yeah. You like you have no, a phone no, no, app, no, no, and no, no, no. you know that part. It's, okay, it's, I just want to be. It's sure. how quickly you can react to somebody else's reaction about something, and so it's a series of reactions and affirmations, reactions and affirmations. There's not, and and since you only have 108 28 characters, you really don't have much more. To do than this affirm or deny, unless you can only use 108 characters. 128 characters. Karen, not words. And that includes Karen, spaces. Yes. And that includes spaces. So whatever you put out on it can only be. And he's. And the other day they said Trump's news feed will officially be a Twitter account. He will not talk with the press. He said he's going to do all his news on the because he doesn't like the press. 
Because they're going to ask him questions yeah. and so, get past his... So he will communicate with the American people on image. Twitter. And it appears on your screen nested, you know, so you see who's saying it and what the original thing was and then the comments, the name of the commenter and then the line that they comment goes out from the original. I actually have just and looked at the screenshots. And I so I am undoing Facebook and any other thing in which my personal information, I can't, I can't. And no checks, no, no banking, nothing on my new computer. Because it's, I think within five years, three years, the computer will be obsolete due to the amount of um, hackers oversight by corporations on what you're buying, and also hackers <coughs> on what you own. To follow the Russian model. Yeah, it's, it's the computer will be obsolete. Yeah, that's a Other Russian model. Yeah. And North Korea. He's almost like, he's like North Korea, that Kim Jong, or Jung Kim. Guy is you don't want to get that wrong. <laughs> Whatever his name is. Kim Jong-un. Kim jong -un. So, what do you think of a guy right at 500 BC about coming up with this? That your reality is in con conflict with your non-being and that your non-being is presenting itself as if it were real. Yeah, that's what he's doing. I mean, and he's giving you the metaphysics of it. Holy Christmas. Do you want some more orange juice, Pierre? No, it's against my religion. Thanks. Okay. Well, my religion says it's okay. It's a sacrament. So, look. Um, See, like, we're into the Usia. Hmm. And, Going to a key word habit, what he does with habit, you know, it's just hmm. shall we? Just put. he who. Uh, therefore, is it not also possible? Sorry, Dave, you want to pick that up right before 162? Go ahead. Is it the Usia not and the Usia? Yes. You might as well, sure. Outside of the top, certainly then Usia will also appear to be with the one if it is not will appear to be with the one if it's not. I wonder how you should take that. Mm -hmm. And according to non usia if indeed the one hmm. she is not, how could it be? And here it goes. Therefore, it is also possible that that which is maintained in some way is not so maintained when it is not changed from this condition by habit. And that is weird, because that sounds like pathologic. the cases yeah. now. Yeah. Habit, yeah. pathologic. Yeah. And, but when I, now, now I need to understand. Therefore, it is also possible that that which is kept in some way is not kept when it is not changed from this condition by habit. And you do see that he's doing that funny thing, ek tau taste taste, Exeos is that the Tautes Exeos are the same gender and everything. So he's separating them as he does sometimes, which either is or is not a good idea. So you want me to have the ex Tautes? Therefore, it is also possible that that which is not kept, well, he has Taos as opposed to ex Tautes. Mm, we're in a different sentence. I didn't know that. He has posts above it, right? Is yeah. maintained in some way. I'm talking about is not so maintained when it is not changed from this condition by habit. And I'm just saying from this habit. Okay. Right? Okay. Something 
but it's a curiosity. Oh, I see. From the so therefore, it is also possible that which is kept maintained in some way is not thus maintained when it does not change from this habit. Mm -hmm. And so, it's maintained in some way, but not maintained. Right. In other words, it's not made conscious, mm -hmm. and therefore not able to be addressed. Right. Is that what he's saying? That's true. Accordingly then, everything which can be kept in this way. And then you'd want to change it, is not mean, is not mean. Or in other words, there is a lack of maintenance in the path of logos. There is a lack of conscious effort in the path of logos. Is that what he's saying? Mm -hmm. That it's maintained somehow as a not being and being, but you couldn't call that a maintenance since it remains in this condition of not being an existing thing. Th Thomas Taylor has, can anything therefore which is affected in a certain manner be not so affected when not changed from this habit? That's pretty good. Affected. He uses affected. Well, can anything which is in a certain condition be not in that condition without changing from it? Mm -hmm. And there's another idea that conscious. Mm -hmm. Conscious consciousness might lead to a change, but yeah, all those three go the same direction. that is functioning throughout. Or is not changed when habit is functioning? Because that's kind no, I'm of... I'm taking the negative out. And well, I didn't hear the changing in there. Huh? But could you do it <clears> again? <throat> Therefore, is it possible that that which is maintained in some way in the path of logo is not really maintained Especially um, when habit is continuous. Gotcha. <clears throat> that would work. I mean, that's not. Yeah. Is, is that like? Is that like saying? <coughs> Is that like saying um, it's not maintained, but it's just kept afloat by habit? That is a kind of maintenance, though, isn't it? Well, <coughs> depends upon what you mean by something being maintained. Have, it comes out of the root of have, doesn't it? Right, that's right. I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Wait a minute. Yeah.
Well, something that is mean, something which is kept in a curious way, is what he means by maintain. Like, hey, how, can that, how is it possible that something which is really not real maintains itself? Some presence of real being? Yeah. Something? How come? Uh, attachment? <laughs> but but yeah, it's belief? A, <coughs> the word maintained is a curious word, see. keep its boundaries, and yet it doesn't keep its boundaries. What's interesting about Apollodos, from one particular event, no significance to anyone else viewing it. That little event then is expanded over everything. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's, it it keeps its it keeps its shape, but then it doesn't. You know. You're talking that kind of maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. See, my problem with the Parmenides has always been that each one of these hypotheses is like this little ball spinning up in the sky. And once you start talking about it in terms of pathologos, it takes on a whole different kind of significance. I really have trouble making these ideas work as little spinning balls that are self-contained up yeah. in the sky. Yeah. But if you once we start person once we started personifying these guys, it started to make a lot more sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. But there should still be a way to read it properly so that each one isn't is is an integral spinning mm -hmm. ball in the sky that can be contemplated without having to make it like right. what you were saying. <coughs> Purely. <coughs> you mentioned that, that it was like, blah, 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 like that, right? This Instead one, of yeah, like, kind of blah, 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 <laughs> like this. But the introduction of the self yeah. takes it out of that purely intellectual realm. Yeah, it kind of, it does. You're right. right. Yeah. It's not just that intellectual exercise. It's, uh, well, it makes a big difference for me because it was real hard to understand when it was just Idea uh, terms bouncing off of each other in different dynamics. Yeah. But what he's saying though is, now that you're seeing the sixth in this way, whether you like it or not, you're going to have to assume the existence of the second. Like he's saying, hey, in the pathologist, you know, the self is there. Hey. Uh, in a certain curious way, it's there. Then what the hell is it? Go to the second. Yeah, gotta go to the second. Wow. That, that's what makes this so powerful. Because they are little balls, unless it's connected to some way, to something that we would call rationally real, not just a bubble in the heavens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's absolutely real. It's also an essential part and of the And that's why country. I think six is uh, central to everything. Yeah, it does bring it home to roost, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, think of every midwife talk or dream exploration. It's always the problem comes up around somebody approaching real being or, you know, experiencing Usia and coming back to themselves. And right when they do, here comes the non-self along with it. And... Oh, that's yeah, that's, that's what, dreams change things, because before, Pierre would always start with, what's your goal? And when we started doing dreams, we let the dreams sort of unpack a state of mind without necessarily being tied to a difficulty. 
which which it's not a criticism, by the way. It's it's another way of dealing with what we are. No, it's taking the popular view of dreams as of having no significance yeah. in themselves. And showing that hey, that's a reality. And and there usually is a point at which the dream plugs right in. Yeah. The problem. Statement. Like you can, what it appears is you can take a dream and show its higher reality. Yeah. Therefore, the presence of the self is in dreams, or comes through in dreams. Are dreams really in the realm of the six hypotheses? No, but I'm saying the popular view is that dreams are yeah. left over ex from yesterday's experience, fragments of yeah. past experience collect when you're asleep, they find a way to enter into your mind. That's a drama, which is then, they can't even talk about it as a drama. Drama already suggests cohesiveness and order. Which makes me mad. I didn't copy down my dream last night. Oh well. Mm -hmm. I, my, <coughs> my, I've got a new phone. It doesn't have a recording on it yet. So I have a better recorder on it. But it was an interesting one. I was supposed to be teaching Spanish. Couldn't find the classroom. Hmm. Boy, that's teacher okay. dreams. Like, uh, <clears throat> well, you see, why is it that, you, that in being in the sixth um, or in the Pavlovas, you can't turn around to the self? You cannot turn around to the self. That's what he's going to. Hmm. Sorry, could you repeat that? I didn't hear what you said. Could you repeat that? <clears throat> if you're in the sixth, there's no way you can get into the second. There's no way in which you can see the self. There's no way in which you can, uh, you can find any basis for the self unless you go through the most strict reasoning, which is in, in, in the sixth hypothesis. Um, well, that's just making an assertion. Look, um, <clears throat> uh, we're going into movement. We're going into movement, and that's when you can therefore use the one kind of movement is turning about, assume metanoia, right? And that's at 50. See? <clears throat> just to jump ahead for a moment, certainly then, Neither will it turn about in the self, for it will not grasp the self in any way. Hmm. For the being is the same. Therefore, it's impossible for non-being to reside in any way. In any of the real beings. Right. Good. In any way. That's right. Yeah. See, that's so, so powerful. Hmm. Hmm. Right. Uh, 52. Accordingly, then the one is not. Cannot turn about in, in that which it is not. No, yeah, it can't. Can. Right. Now he's going to slide to a conclusion in the next 10 par paragraphs, which really goes to uh, 50 to 62, continues that line of thought. <clears throat> Hmm. And uh, hmm. 56 and etc. They're all great quotes. Okay. Wow, that's interesting. You know, for the guy. Amazing. Without an example, just purely. It's as if the examples had already pre presented themselves in so many ways that, and 
he was so, and others were so familiar with these different states of mind, which existed probably just as much as they did then as they do now, um, that um, he, he could pull this off. Yeah, there has to be so many people close to or alike Aristoteles, or it would never be possible. Never be possible. Well, Aristoteles, but I'm also thinking that that these kinds of states of mind, pathologos, nihilism, yeah. whatever, were also a part of that world. <clears throat> And, and depending on who you hung with, you had to deal with it or not. Yeah, you're getting to the my old interest, interesting question is what was, we don't have it, but what was the effect, what was the effect of the Iliad on people? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a pathologist, isn't it? <laughs> it's a pathologist without a midwife. He midwifed himself. That had to be believable. But the damn thing never would have gotten off. Hmm. Right? Like, in the Iliad, hey, they say, what the hell, don't worry about Achilles, you know. Uh, he's just like all the other heroes. He, they all go through this. Last minute they'll join. Don't worry about it. You know, that's a, that's their game. And they go ahead. And die in droves. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a clear perception of that he's a type. Mm -hmm. hmm. That you can expect that. <clears throat> then they might have had a really good dream worker too. Oh wow! Although, of course. I mean, because of the what well, in the I dark places of wisdom yeah. that yeah. Peter something book that re recounts the. Mm -hmm use of dreams to cure illness, right? Yeah. Dark places of wisdom, Peter. That's why I'm hoping for some letter, another recovered letter of any one of those eight classical, classic age letters going from one place to the other, a friend in Athens to Alexandria. Barring that, you could always write one, Pierre. <laughs> we'll find one under a rock ah, again? Yeah. Time for another rock. <clears throat> well, you're going to be out there where there's rocks. So. Wasn't that funny? So I, I got, remember I got some aunt, some people responding saying they wanted to see the original? That and when you wrote the, the Alcibiades Venadoris, no. right? somebody said, <clears throat> where is this text, right? Oh, the Alcibiades oh. maybe. Yeah. Classic philosopher from the University of Texas. And that's tight writing. That said, hey, that uh, let me see the original text of that. <laughs> I met him, by the way, one day. Ah. Yeah. Uh, many, several years later at a conference. And did you have any talk? Well, yeah, but he said, well, that was just, ah. now that I know it's out of you. <laughs> Um. <laughs> He's not going to give me any scholarly distance here. Hmm. Interesting. So what is this? Is just really, it's, um, hey, you know what? Now that we have, <coughs> we'll explore it more, but uh, it's really worth knowing, isn't it? The sixth, sure. or the relation yeah, of the pathologos yeah, to yeah, the sixth? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Because you do have people, I was thinking on the side of the pathologos, or on the side of suffering that we don't know about, you have Protagoras and those um, rhetoricians and sophists, so to speak. They've got to have had that, especially, isn't it in the, isn't it the Protagoras who thinks he has who can convince anyone of anything without knowing the truth of anything. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. <clears throat> he, he, he must have had a headache a lot, kind no. of a migraine. You know, they used to have their students, and they'd assign them, okay, you go over to that person, you try hmm. to persuade them of this. Oh, really? Uh, you go over there and you persuade someone of that. That's right, they'd have to have practices. Right. Homework. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was their homework. <laughs> Go do it. Your assignment. <coughs> <coughs>
So someone must have done this. Yep. What? Yeah, done it. There it wow. is. Yeah. Was that yours, Gina? Or did Pierre bring it? Uh, Pierre brought it. Both. Mm, that's true. I brought it and it's hers. Yes. Oh. <laughs> cool. So I thought I'd bring it today. So your, your question, can you get one of these? Uh, we'll have to find out. It's really so beautifully done, you know. That's our friend. Mm -hmm. That's our friend Nakul. Yeah. Nakul. He's more into hockey now. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. He put a nice a reply on one of Pierre's posts, though. Right now, I cannot remember what it was. Yeah. But I remember yeah. thinking That's it was good stuff. He's still mm -hmm. He's a bright guy. Now, yeah. I'd be willing to sell it to you. Oh, yeah? Since it's not mine. Uh, Uh, th is it also like yes. six, six is to the yes. second as this is to this? Yes. And also the figures represent each one of the positions. They're laying around. I don't know. I may have one one extra if I do. I'll let you know. Other people have extras too. Like like Pierre Grant coffee cups. Yep, that's true. We have Pierre Grimes coffee cups. <laughs> Two generations. Pierre Grimes. Throw this at Trump at one of the speeches. They'd arrest you. You'd go into a dark pit for whatever, attacking the president. I, I'm waiting for Trump to give a speech. Oh my God. Something, other, uh, something other than a fan, you know. You know, thank you thing. He's got to do something his, on this. His, his, his first State of the Union is yes, going to be can. such a laugh. Right? You know, three word sentences with the word sad at the end or something. <laughs> the tax chain system needs to be changed. Sad. <laughs> uh, American veterans, great people, great people. They need help. I met one once. He gave me his simple Purple Heart. It's a real opportunity for us as a culture to put words on this state of mind and see it and have a, a reaction to it. Yeah. Or I take some action in reaction to it. You mean when, when he finally does have to give a speech of substance? We live in such a multi, like, multimedia avenue, I mean, in so many ways for us to look at him as a persona. And if it doesn't motivate some sort of progressive movement or these, these non Democrat, these non-political people. Then what will? Then? then yeah, then I guess you get the reality you get. You know, nothing's going to alter the condition that it's in. <laughs> Wasn't that what we just read? <laughs> Something's got to come in and change the, from the condition that's in, or lack of motion. I had a friend who offered up that it was our opportunity to look at the state of mind in our culture and address it as a problem. And be and transform it. Hmm. That it was some sort of divine purpose that <clears throat> came into power, you know. And in see the. Uh, can, by the way, just <coughs> uh, the conclusion of this one gives the ground both for uh, it's being generated and dissolved. Right. So it has a, it's a generative model and a dissolution. Therefore, that's equally true of the papalova. Right? It can be generated and can be dissolved. Mm. Right? Mm. Now, <coughs> say, honey. After you master this, are you going to go back to Utah and give them a talk on the six hypothesis and the pathologia? Yeah. Good. I go for that. 
All right. Right. And then you have to come back here and tell us how it went. Yeah, in a body bag. We'll send you with a group of of veteran Hell's Angels guys to like perform. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. We'll add that. I think David will be plenty for that. But yeah. All right. <laughs> my, in my big ass truck. Yeah. There we go. Well, something, isn't it? Yeah. What? Yeah, it is something. Yeah. Can we take a the problem or take a dream and go through this and show the nature not of it? Not a dream. No, Wouldn't not a dream. Be. A problem? Sometimes more than a show. <clears throat> sure. That's what we were saying. That's his dream. He's going to do it. You don't have to do it. That's right. That's going to be his do it. nature of his speech. So we can just learn from his experience. Yeah. Great idea. Good, because I'm getting really lazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Pierre. Thank you, guys. Bon voyage. Yeah. <clears throat> I hate to ask you this, but do you have any idea how long you plan to stay? I don't exactly hate to ask. January 16th. He may not know. I haven't got the thing to say. What? January 16th. Really? <laughs> I really do not know that's true. Mm. I would like, okay. I, I'd rather not even know it. That's yeah, sure. I, so I'll ask Nancy. <laughs> no, I get that. I wouldn't want to know it either. <laughs> Changes the oh nature of the voyage. Sorry. <laughs> I tried to change us all. <laughs> so the oh. mid middle of January sometimes. She said January 16th. Okay. I, I, I did not know that. By yeah, the way. that's what she sent me. That's okay. So. Well, Barbara wanted to know it was from Nancy. Yeah, okay. Yeah, do you have um, any time for a dream between now and when you leave? Oh. Or is it uh, beyond no your knowledge as well? Got it now? We should say it before. Huh? I do have it now. No, let's see. Uh, you made copies of it? Um, I would, <clears throat> I'd prefer to do it. Um, hmm? I prefer to do it in private, but... Oh, okay. If it's the only way, I... I no, 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 it's your... No, no, that's absolutely correct. Okay. Uh, so let me find out. Uh, maybe later. It would have to be much later. I got oh. some things happening. That's, that's fine. Okay. I'm, I'm okay. Do you have time for a midwife talk? A what? A midwife talk? A midwife talk? I... Well, I'll just muddle on with my problems and wait until I see you next time. <laughs> I'm afraid I gotta let you go. You got stuff to do. <laughs> well, we were gonna talk today, yeah, right? You're on. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Gina. I was just going to say, Pierre, if you want, if you want to reach, sorry, 